And this is the thing, right, is that, you know, it's, we were talking about black conservatives, I think, the last podcast. I think it's interesting. And I, I don't know how much balance of power they have, but I, I think they, it's possible they're going to define this election. And it's almost like if you're a right wing conservative, there's people in the black community who will, like, take your ethnicity away from you. So, oh, you're not you're not black if you believe in, you know, whatever, Reagan economics or whatever the thing is, you know. Well, speaking of right wing conservatives, we, <laughs> that's um, a good segue. Uh, he's right? the best. He's the best. Thank you. It's been right service. Um, thanks to Bob Woodward, uh, we have actual voice recordings of a certain orange uh, um, leader down south <laughs> who admitted who during the early pandemic he he knew how dangerous COVID actually was and didn't say anything. Oh, I he saw that. Didn't say anything. He was like, oh, I didn't want to worry the people, but I mean, the people are dead. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Megan, what do you think are going to be the consequences of like uh, people hearing that Donald Trump said this? Do you think Donald Trump supporters will even care? Honestly, I hate to say it, but no, because he has already gotten away with so much crap right you see the racist statements the misogynistic statements basically admitting that he has sexually assaulted a woman by just grab her by the pussy right and um you know the (laughs) i hear there's a bill with some evidence with collusion with russia but again all of this he's gotten away with it and these are criminal things right sexual assault is something you should get jail time for and this, they've let that go. He made fun of a disabled reporter. They let that go. And so I feel like Trump supporters will always find an excuse for him. Mm. And a reason I don't think for it's just that it. they find an excuse for him. I think that's why they elected him. Yeah, mm. I mean. I think it's like they love that. I think it's like the more he does like horrible things and doesn't get punished for it, it's like, it's like, they're, it's like they're fantasy. It's like they're living vicariously through him. I think the problem, though, and and uh, it's a card that the Republicans play very well. Um, as much as you want to point the finger at the Republicans for malfeasance and you know felony uh, felony actions. Uh, how can you not point your fingers at the Democrats as well, considering the history of malfeasance in both parties? So all Trump has to do is say, okay, yeah, well, look at so-and-so and look at what, like politicians throughout the history of politics have gotten away with shit a lot of the time, a lot of the times so that's why they're politicians. In the last year, Joe Biden was accused of sexual assault right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Kamala Harris accused him of being a racist. Yeah. And now, and now she's his it. running partner. I and disagree. It's again. It's, you know what, Lewis, quickly, I disagree. I think in the time of Nixon, um, he resigned because he knew that constitutionally he could not survive an impeachment because mm-hmm. he knew he was guilty. And I there don't was think a time, so. there was a time when politicians, um, you know, you you would destroy your career by saying half of the things that Donald Trump says. Yeah, that, well, one, you're talking, I think your reality, though, is post-60s. I think the kind of things that Donald Trump has been saying, especially on the race and ethnicity side, you know, uh, assaulting women, that has been a current in male politics forever. The 60s, started this kind of um, correction of behavior, if you want, or political correctness and uh, verbal, uh, in their verbal uh, actions. But as far as negatively affecting their careers, ending their careers uh, through saying really unconscionable things, that's a really recent phenomenon. Yeah, but and I mean, here's, oh, sorry, Megan, go ahead. Oh, no. he's going to talk about oh, when she grew up in the 60s and her. Yeah, career. when I grew up in the 60s, mm-hmm. uh, you might not know it, but I'm 80 years old. No. <laughs> when were you I born told again? You when were you born again? 
1998. That's when I was born. Wow. Bobby's my I'm father. I'm out. None of your damn business. <laughs> Bobby, why did you ask? It was none of your damn wow, business. Wow, yeah, yeah, really. How does it feel, though, business. guys? Like, how does it feel? 1998. Feels great. I was in university. Yeah. Yeah, my kid, oh, my kid was born in 97, so it's all good. I'm 98, I was setting up the blocks for my divorce. <laughs> uh, as you were saying, Megan. As you were saying. Yes, but I think that after you have a huge wave of progress, which we had from Obama, you know, I think that's why he's getting away with more because there was hatred building up from all of the racists. And so when Trump comes out and says the things that they are holding back, now they feel they have a license to go ahead and say those things, you know, and be that way. And I think with every wave of progress we have, there are always people who are going to want to pull back. 